Okay, uh, speak, so big news last night. Sting is going to the Hall of Fame. I, I don't know if I expected it this. I, I expected somebody more Texas, personally, uh, going in as our, our big headliner. I think we'll probably fill out the rest of the kind of, can we call it a Hall of Fame undercard, I guess, when we talk about this. Um, so I, I guess, first of all, uh, what do you guys think of Sting going in? Uh, uh, Justin? Well, I think it's very fitting. Um, if you're following me on Twitter a couple hours prior to the one o'clock afternoon announcement by WWE, you'd have already known Sting. So I tweeted you and I, I said that uh, Sting is your safe bet uh, based upon logic and from those who I was talking to inside of the company. Um, it makes perfect sense right now because um, he's really banged up. I, I don't, I would not be shocked if we never see Sting wrestle again. He's pretty banged up from some of the injuries he sustained from the last match against Seth Rollins and um, even dating back to the match with Triple H last mania, not to, not to bury the guy, so to speak, as I'm trying to put him over here in a long winded form. But I, I know that there was some comments internally about staying in terms of, you know, Jesus, couldn't guy, couldn't the guy have got a tan and, you know, was he, what was he at his best? And then this is stuff coming from people that were, you know, very close. And, and whatever. I mean, it, it, it's, it's great for staying. It, this is the best time. The point being, he's done what he's going to do in the ring. That's done. This allows him to be featured on main event week, on WrestleMania weekend. Uh, he can do access. He can do media. He's going to do Hall of Fame. Gives him his time to shine. Uh, lets him make a speech. And cause, because, quite frankly, in the future, and this is, he's the most relevant to the WWE audience it's ever going to be. Every year that goes by, his relevance and, and his memories start to fade away again. And they got other guys, The Undertaker, The Rock, other guys that are going to occupy the main headline spots in the future years that are going to, quite frankly, outrank things, whether they like that or not. So, so it's a good time. It's time, 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 time to refer to it. I think I take between you know, the, the Freebirds. Um, yeah, I think the Freebirds are the main, the main Texas attraction that we will probably see finally in, in the Hall of Fame, and, and, and justifiably so. Uh, I, I think we'll get a Texas flair to it, but this is the right time for staying, and quite frankly, maybe the only time for staying. Mm -hmm. uh, some good comments from the chat room here. Uh, if you guys are on video, we got that in the corner down there. Uh, Garza saying, uh, staying well deserved. I was expecting Taker for the Texas connection, but Mike's got a good point. He thinks Taker's only going to go in when, when he decides he's done and ready for the Hall of Fame. Um, and I think that's when he's more than over with his wrestling career, personally. Well, the other thing to remember, too, with the Taker-Texas uh, connection is mm -hmm. while a lot, while all of us talking here and, and probably much of the audience are the quote-unquote, you know, tuned-in smart fans and we're aware that Taker's from Texas and lives in Texas and et cetera, you know, his character is not at all, you know, connected to Texas. I mean, obviously, the American Badass character, I guess, was they built in Houston, but, you know, the Dead Man character isn't. And so, and he's the kind of guy that obviously who's protected their character or attempted to in this day and age more than him. So I, I don't think Texas is a big, uh, it, it, I'm, I'm not surprised that he's not trying to draw a great, you know, uh, love to Texans, uh, you know, to, to make himself a headliner. Um, you know, if you're a fan and, you, and you're from Texas, you know that that's where he's from. Then I guess that's a bonus to you. But to him, I don't think that he has any. I don't think he cares if it's Texas, if it's Minneapolis, if it's Philadelphia or wherever. I think you know, like you said, Sorg, he's going to go in when he knows that he's done otherwise. And uh, who knows how many more years he thinks he has in him. Mm -hmm. Bobby, we have Jay Town joining us here after a break. Uh, what do you think about Sting going in? Uh, you got any fond Sting memories? Yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to add, uh, what's more Texas than a uh, born-again Christian cosplaying as the crow? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically Sting's gimmick, right? right okay, <laughs> yeah. Also a baseball aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen the, um, the late 90s were hard, man. Um, yeah. yeah. On all that's my favorite Sting, though. I mean, NWO's thing is like, that's. I, I mean, I, I like the old Sting, but... The surfer gimmick was kind of like, eh. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think I don't know. I, it, in my, well, the, uh, I didn't have the WCW pre NWO basically yeah. like access to watching it personally. Um, so to me, that was the 
shiny thing over there in WCW. Like he was their Hulk Hogan to me. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the shiny character. He was the antithesis of of Ultimate Warrior. That kind of actually made sense. Um, like to to a, a, a young kid in the late early or late eighties, early nineties, that was really attractive. I thought, and and and, and was deservedly so. I think they're they're marquee person. Um, and if you go back, that's when the good matches happened with him too. Um, that's yeah, when Robocop. Steve, uh, okay, that's when Robocop. <laughs> we, we don't have to. I, and by the way, can I have a side note? I, I, can can we get Robocop in the celebrity wing beside him? Like just, awesome. I mean, just, if we're gonna, it's do only it, a matter of time. It's just a, a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Um, but uh, uh, no, no. I, th- I think I think. <laughs> For me, even though I didn't get to experience a lot of it, like kind of looking back, like Bleach Pond's thing was like kind of kind of the guy at that point. Mm-hmm. So, um, as long as they pay homage to that uh, movie they kind of made with the uh, the boat blowing up, what? the White Castle Fear thing, White Castle Fear. <laughs> DDP wants you to remember that because it was awesome. They, hey, they got their say on table for three on that one. So, yeah, and yeah. and a lot of us, uh, a lot of us then had to Google White Castle of Fear and see the uh, the tug of war of doom uh, that that happened there. So, I mean, basically, you tell you tell uh, Sting, you tell him there's a party, and he'll go. I, I don't know how great of a, a smart, good guy he was back then. Um, LB, what are your thoughts on Sting uh, going in this year? I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, I mean, you can tell this guy's beat up. He's uh, he's in bad shape. His uh, anything that you do with Sting now is going to be diminishing returns. So uh, putting him in the Hall of Fame is the right move. He's going to stay relevant in that way that uh, people with WWE Legends contracts stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a big name, and I mean, as soon as he signed with the company, the writing was on the wall. Um, you know, he was going to have a few you know WrestleMania moments, um, do a couple things here and there, nothing too impressive, and then be put in the Hall of Fame and have a nice little retirement plan uh that is the legends contract so i think it's great you know um i was never a big wcw fan but i did enjoy sting uh oh excuse me i had spicy dinner um and uh i i think it's good i think that um hopefully this will be his uh his like kind of last chapter to his career and it's a nice last chapter he's not uh, a victim of tna's bullshit um, and he can just kind of go gracefully now. Fingers crossed. I don't know if we're getting trolled in the chat room, but Mad Mike says that his favorite was the TNA Joker Sting, and Garza's is main event Mafia Steve Borton. Um, so uh, maybe they'll get some representation. I, pre- I, pre- I prefer T-shirt Steve in the latter days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I wish we could just, I, I, you know, how many, how many, you know, we talk about the bump card when he talks to to wrestling, especially somebody. <laughs> who's up, up there in the years like Sting. Um, how many wasted good matches of WWE we could have had because of the stuff he had in TNA? You know, do, do you feel like that's that was kind of a wasted chapter in, in, in a career like that? Absolutely. I mean, you know, there, there was nothing that happened in TNA that he did that, you know, really you know, furthered anything in his legacy, quite honestly. Let's no, be real. No, no. Um, and so you look and then look at the time period, you know, WWE arguably was at, you know, it's, it's, it's most delicate and thinnest roster you know, around that 2010, 2011 period, you know, I mean, CM Punk popped up with the pipe bomb speech and that kind of gave some new life to the main event scene, although it wasn't always even supposed to, you know, but you think about it, imagine if, if Sting had been around. As the uh, as Edge was slowing down and then eventually retired, and, and Del Rio came in, but you know had some momentum, but didn't have some momentum. You know, Batista goes away, and Bret Hart comes in for a, a weird Spawn song. You know, Sting was there. You know, it's 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 pretty interesting to think of the potential and what he could have done uh, to to you know in the situation there. Um, I think the company's in a better place now than it was then. So, you know, that's nice. But, uh, you know, I, certainly him going up against Triple H and then Seth Rollins is, 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 is pretty cool. But uh, I, I think, yeah, definitely the, the TNA chapter, it, it offers nothing to his legacy. Mm-hmm. I have a question, though. Um, during that time when he was in TNA, do you think WWE would have had him? Like if he had approached them and said, hey, how about we do a little business? They wouldn't have just told him to piss off. 
I, I absolutely think that he would have uh, that, that that they would have took him. Yes, um, I, I I don't from from everything I've you know and I said this on my radio show today. Sting's one of the few guys that I was unfortunately, and I hope this changes. You know, I, uh, but unfortunately, he's one of the few guys I never interviewed and never met personally. But from everything I've heard from people that were around him, and then people that were on the WWE side, uh, WWE's been. I mean, there's a reason why Sting versus Ric Flair was the last match on the last Nitro. That was a Vince McMahon call. Vince had a certain respect for Ric Flair, and Gary Gray was great, which is the first thing. Well, well, Justin, we're getting there. there. Justin. There was never any problem with Vince's or WWE's end. Sting was always Sting, you know, as we've heard with WWE in terms of, you know, their their content and you know, Sting was worry about how he'd be used and such and such. So uh, absolutely. I think, it, and, I, and I'm sure WWE probably inquired several times whenever contracts came, came close to end with TNA of saying, let's try to get this guy. And he mm-hmm. continued to, to resist and he stayed loyal to the TNA, which says something about who he is as a person. Um, yeah, yeah, I absolutely think WWE would have took him in a heartbeat and he would have, and, and it was all up to him. I think I think the Shockmaster invaded partially into what you were telling us there, uh, but we got the most of it there. We we got a little bit of weird feedback going on in the middle of it. So, <laughs> um, but no, uh, you know, I well, I, I think yeah, mostly it was it was it was him staying away, right? Um, I don't. I'm sorry. I, I was I was dealing with technical sides here. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I think it was it was Sting. It's Sting's call to stay away because he was worried about. It. I think there was a statement. I was just reading rereading something. I, I heard this before, but like that whole. Rock Booker T, who are you? Um, incident back when the uh, the early WCW invasion was felt like a sign of things to come when it came to if he came over WWE, WWF, maybe at the time, um, that early on. So, um, I agree, you know, good that he waited, but I think he waited too long. I think he waited way too long, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, who do you think, um, like looking to the rest of it, Robocop aside, um, who do you think rounds out the rest of Hall of Fame? We have a few suggestions from the chat room. Um, some stuff being thrown around like the uh, uh, the Freebirds, uh, for instance, and uh, JBL could could be thrown in there. I think I think it's worthwhile for that, at least like kind of maybe the lower tier. Definitely not a headliner for anything. But that can have, uh, uh, do a lot of uh, Texas flavor for it. What do you think, Bobby? Uh, I want to see Tatanka in. Does that make sense? He's in- one of the, the like fringe superstars I want to see in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he 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 kind of goes in like a Coco Beware level, right? No, no. <laughs> the talk was better than that. I wore my tape player out playing his theme song. Listen, listen. Yeah, okay, wait, wait. You 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 wore your tape player out doing his theme the song. Player, the but how many kids about five years older than you wore out the Power Driver album uh, yeah, that's with true. Coco Beware? So I think it's all about context, Bobby. So that's true. That's so true. okay, okay, we'll, we'll we'll take that then. I mean, Lemmy seems like an obvious choice yeah. with the recent events, unfortunately, right? Um, who else? Who else is in your mind, LB? Um, that's a great question. I I, I don't think I have an answer for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, I it it's so hard for me to keep track as to who's in and who's not mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I um. I really don't know. <laughs> what about you, Justin? Well, first off, if, if Bobby played Tatanka on his Walkman, I feel bad for that Walkman. But <laughs> I would go on to say, uh, I, yeah, let's not reflect, let's not remix it at all. Uh, I would I would go on to say that uh, the Freebirds obviously make complete sense given it's WCCW territory. Um, you know, Lemmy in my same tweet that I told everybody Sting. You know, before it was announced, I said Lemmy seems like a, a very obvious choice for the celebrity wing, which is interesting. Not to say that he should, he doesn't deserve it because he did, you know, mm-hmm. he did perform some of the, the greatest theme music ever. Mm-hmm. But I do feel a little bit bad that if Lemmy goes in first before Jim Johnston, who has been yeah. the maestro of almost what thirty years of WWE music, but that's another debate. Uh, I think I've heard this, and this makes complete sense. Stan Hansen. Uh, who was big in Japan, but Stan Hansen also had a, a Texas um, uh, history, if I do believe so. So I, I think you, you go in that. I think you go in that route. I think you got. I think you know between the Freebirds, Sting, uh, Lemmy, given the you know the, given the time value, and then that he's on everybody's mind. Um, I, I think I think you know you got a decent 
a decent start there. Um, you know, there's still the Owen Hart factor. Mm-hmm. A lot of people keep saying they want Owen Hart to be a headliner, and while I'm not trying to, you know, disrespect Owen, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever get that because of all the legality situation we hear about with his wife and the family, and obviously Owen's not alive to make a speech, and I don't sounds like his the only person that can make a speech for him would be Brett, but then you think Brett's the guy that should induct him. So I, I think the Owen thing is, is kind of a weird situation. Eventually it should happen, but I think you need to get more people on board until it does. We have some good suggestions and some bad suggestions, Virgil. What about um, Vader? From the, what? What about Vader? Vader is one that's that's coming up here. Uh, Bigelow, Jacqueline. I actually hadn't considered Vader. That's a pretty good idea. Vader, Vader I think, is deservingly so. Well, um, and he te- and he te- Vader teased mm-hmm. on, uh, I think, Twitter. Mm-hmm. He tweeted a picture of the Hall of Fame logo, kind of suggesting. But then again, if you know the guy behind the mask, it's you can't put it past the guy. It's just completely trolling all of us. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I haven't seen what his Twitter's like. I couldn't imagine. Um, Teddy Long is brought up. I like that idea. I think he's overdue for something like that. Sable was brought up, uh, being from Texas, apparently. Uh, she's a grandma, man. What's that? Wait, wait. She's a grandma, man. She's a grandma. Grandma Sable can get in there. Did they put JBL in yet? No. No, no, I don't think so. No. Uh, so I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Rick hey. Mall, Mark Hill. I don't know. I don't know if it feels like slim pickings. It's just there's so many out there mm-hmm. that are part of the Hall of Fame. It's kind of like, well, well, who's left? You, know? you got it, nails. Nails. No. Nails. Oh god. Oh, it's a big boss man in. I know we're talking Cobb oh, County, Georgia, yeah. Georgia, and not Texas, but you know, I, 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 I think he's deserved to be in there. At least he was a big part of. He was a big he's part of my wrestler, my wrestling childhood, right beside Polka Dot Dusty Rhodes. So have they ever put have they ever put uh Carrie Von Eric, the Texas Tornado, and the Von Eric family in? I you know, know they, first, they they built Dallas, so for some reason I presume they were already in there, but I could be wrong. Like like the Von Eric family. Because haven't, haven't they done like families before as, to some extent? Yeah, I think so. Like like or or you know, like like, like I don't know. It, 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 like, that, 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 seemed, that was in the back of my head, too. But, you know, even though they're the subject of this very depressing DVD that I swear I'm going to give away at the 10-year party this Thursday at Looking for Group. That's how I get my plug-in. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's, well, another, another one is Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody. Oh, yeah. That would be a good one. A good one. Um, and, and that makes sense. You have Sting brings all the people in that, like, oh, we've seen Sting in the last year and a half. Um, we've we 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 that's more prevalent. He's a little bigger, and then we just kind of stick in all those guys and educate, you know, the the mass. And hey, and then there's this guy. He's not the guy you're coming for, but man, you're probably gonna like or be confused by these old timey stories. And this is why he was like important. Or be confused by <laughs> <laughs> the, the Von Erichs were inducted in 2009. That's why I thought I thought they were in yeah. there. So and it was like the family, right? Yeah, it was the family. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. So that's pretty taken care of there, unless they're going to single anybody out. And I don't know. I don't know who you would single out if that was the case uh, for that. Um, what the uh, the funks are the funks all in? I don't think. I think they're they're in as a tag team. The aren't they? Funk Brothers are in. So I think that yeah, they're covered there. Uh, unless we do anything individual with Terry or something like that, so I, I think there's a lot of options. Um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of comes out of there. I like I like the idea of Vader and Lemmy um, to to round out the top of it. Um, yeah. Booker T's in there, right? Yeah. Okay, so I mean that that really does kind of round it. and nail. So we'll look out for uh, I, I nails and Virgil can get their own special <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Uh, so let us know, Johnson. just as the chat room is, Dennis Stamp, the heart and soul of Texas from Traegar. Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones. Uh, thank you. I was trying to remember the other guy. He can go in the nails wing. Um, if Dennis Stamp goes in, I demand that he do his entire speech on trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be the Hall of Fame for the ages. All right. Well, hey, um, we don't have a, 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 a Hall of Fame here in Beachview, but we do have some pretty um, famous pizza here. Slice on Broadway. They're supporting the show, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here for nearly two years. Thank you so much, uh, Fiend, whenever we have our in-studio guests. They fed all of everybody that was here for that insane, insane night 
we had for the 500 and 100 episode celebration here before Christmas. Um, apparently a night that I'm going to relive coming up here as I watch the Indie Mayhem Show 100 for the very first time. Uh, because I don't remember much of it, and it's out there on the internet. Uh, I'm told that the sexy, talented dudes have each watched it multiple times, so thank you for the hits, guys. Um, and there's still unmentionable um, gifts that 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 vibrate, unfortunately, that they gave me. Um, that I'm high. Well, there it goes. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm not showing that one on camera. Um, and uh, there's that. Uh, but SliceOnBroadway.com. This is supposed to be a pizza commercial. I forgot. Um, but. Uh, 